St. Joseph was constantly faithful in his devotion to our Lord and Our Lady, and would often experience ecstasies as a result. His heart was constantly aflame with love, that it consumed his whole being. As he became more and more afflicted by love, he began to yearn for the day of his death, while asking the Lord to envelop him completely in this fiery love. This divine burning grew so intense that it began to radiate outwardly in Joseph's physical appearance. Servant of God Mother Cecilia Baj and Venerable Maria Dagrida reveal these moments. Madre Cecilia, the love of God attained such an intensity within Joseph that his body was affected by it. His heart became as a volcano of fiery divine love, so that he would often exclaim, O oh, God of love, put an end to my life. O oh, if this fire of love, now burning in my breast, would only consume me completely. Madre Cecilia continues, St. Joseph began to have the desire for death by being consumed with divine love. Joseph's heart was on fire, his body was radiant, and his eyes sparkled. Mary was delighted as she gazed at Joseph, for he seemed to be more like a creature of heaven than of earth. Venerable Maria Dagrida Joseph, in his final years, was weakened from the fire of his ardent love, which was so vehement that the flights and ecstasies of his most pure soul would often have burst the bounds of his body if the Lord, who vouchsafed them, had not strengthened and comforted him against these agonies of love. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. From henceforth now, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, for their works follow them. Apocalypse 14, 13. It is widely held that St. Joseph passed away in Nazareth at the age of 60. His death occurred while Jesus was still living at home, before he departed and began his public ministry. After the event of the finding of Jesus in the temple, Joseph is no longer active in the Bible, whereas Our Lady is still present throughout the rest of Christ's life. The most notable examples are the Wedding Feast of Cana, the Crucifixion, and Pentecost. These examples mention Mary, but not her blessed spouse, who surely would have been at her side for these events. At the crucifixion scene, the Mother of Christ stands at the foot of the cross with John, the beloved apostle, to whom Jesus entrusts his mother. Had Joseph been alive, Jesus would have no need to place Mary into the care of his beloved friend. St. Peter Julian Imard St. Joseph foresaw Mary's tears and misery. He would have desired to stay by her side, to be allowed to remain on earth that he might climb Calvary and sustain her. He had to submit to death and leave behind him Jesus and Mary. Jesus to be crucified and abandoned by his people. Mary to suffer alone, unassisted. How his love for them was crucified. One might ask, since Jesus had the power to resurrect the dead, such as he did for his friend Lazarus and others, why did he not do the same for his father on earth? Jesus did not do this for Joseph, because Joseph had fulfilled his mission on earth to guard, nurture, and raise the Son of God into manhood. The mystics reveal that in Joseph's final days, he experienced intense ecstasies and the comfort of the angels with Jesus and Mary at his side. Mother Cecilia Baj, Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich, and Venerable Maria da Grida reveal. Mother Cecilia Baj, during the final period of his life, St. Joseph was privileged to hear the singing of the angels, announcing to him his blessed departure being near at hand. This news gave him great joy and consolation of spirit. The Savior was at his side to provide comfort with his divine words 
and Mary would also sit with him. Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich, when Joseph was dying, Mary sat at the head of his bed, holding him in her arms. Jesus stood just below her, near St. Joseph's breast. The whole room was brilliant with light and full of angels. Venerable Maria da Grida, St. Joseph's noble soul had been purified more and more each day in the affliction of divine love. The days before his death, St. Joseph enjoyed the company of Jesus and Mary, and by command of the Lord, the holy angels played celestial music, mixing their hymns of praise with the benedictions of the saint, accompanied by the sweetest fragrances to comfort the dying saint. On the day before he died, being inflamed with divine love, he was wrapped in an ecstasy in which he clearly saw the mysteries of the Incarnation and Redemption and the militant Church with all its sacraments and mysteries. When St. Joseph issued from his ecstasy, his face shone with wonderful splendor, and his soul was transformed by his vision of the essence of God. Regarding the final sweet words of the carpenter of Nazareth, Mother Cecilia Baj and Venerable Maria da Grida reveal that Joseph, second only to the Blessed Virgin Mary in holiness among God's creatures, begged forgiveness of Jesus and Mary for any wrongs he may have committed as a father and spouse. He gave thanks to them for all their love and especially thanked Christ for his future sufferings that would save mankind. Mother Cecilia Budge reveals St. Joseph's gratitude. Joseph begged Jesus and Mary to forgive him for any deficiencies on his part as father and husband. He thanked them for all the love that they manifested towards him, for their patience, and for all the graces that he obtained from them. Finally, he gave thanks to the Savior for everything he already suffered, and that he would suffer in the future to accomplish the great work of the redemption of mankind. Joseph then blessed and praised Mary, while telling her that he looked forward to the day of their reunion in heaven. Joseph's love for his spouse was unparalleled to that of any spouse in the history of creation. And here, in his final moments on earth, he prayed that all generations would indeed call her blessed. Venerable Maria da Grida reveals the sincere words of Saint Joseph to the spouse he would soon leave behind. Blessed art thou among all women. Let angels and men praise thee. Let all the generations praise and exalt thy dignity. And may the Most High be eternally praised for having created thee so pleasing in his eyes and in the sight of all the blessed spirits. I hope to enjoy thy sight in the heavenly fatherland. Then, turning toward Christ his Son, the ever humble saint attempted to kneel before him and beg forgiveness for any mistakes he may have made while raising the Son of God as his own. Saint Joseph adored and exalted his Son, acknowledging him as his God, asking him for a final blessing and gave thanks to him for choosing him to be the husband of Mary, who brought him into the mystery of salvation. Venerable Maria da Grida speaks of these moments between father and son. Then this man of God, turning toward Christ in reverence, wished to kneel before him. But the sweetest Jesus, coming near, received him in his arms, where, reclining his head upon them, Joseph said, my highest Lord and God, Son of the Eternal Father, give thy blessing to thy servant. Pardon the faults which I have committed in thy service and interactions. I extol and magnify thee and render heartfelt thanks to thee for having chosen me to be the spouse of thy true mother. Let thy greatness and glory be my thanksgiving for all eternity. After Joseph spoke his final words, he received the blessing of Christ as well as his next mission to be carried out in limbo until the time of Christ's ascension into heaven. Maria da Grida The Redeemer of the world 
gave him his benediction, saying, My father, rest in peace, and in the grace of thy eternal father and mine. And to the prophets and saints who await thee in limbo, bring the joyful news of the approach of their redemption. Servant of God, Madre Cecilia Baj, the Savior held him and spoke to him of the glory, love, and generosity of his heavenly Father. These words penetrated deeply into the soul of the dying Joseph, and they inflamed him still more with love for God. Since the final moment of Joseph's life had arrived, the Son of God then invited Joseph's blessed soul to depart from his body, so that it might be taken up in his own holy hands, and from there committed to the angels who were to escort it into limbo. Venerable Maria d'Agrida, reclining in his arms, the most fortunate Saint Joseph expired. <laughs>